we have the picture of all the three divisions of time the past the present and the future the subconscious past the present which shapes our future and the future itself as a force influencing our present it is not only true for the case of an individual it is also true for the cosmic working in fact it is a cosmic past which is being described here and it is the cosmic future which has to come now the cosmic future can come largely because of the action of the individual by itself it does not happen by the collective by the action of the individual the cosmic future also gets shaped so it is this double aspect which savitri has to take care of in her yogic pursuit both her own past as well as the past of the creation therefore we are told that our larger being sits behind cryptic walls that larger being is again of two aspects one speaks within light comes to us from above when these two join together then the cosmic future can get shaped by their joint action something coming out from within something pressing from above it is a double action which is involved in the shaping of the cosmic future now first we are told what is connected with that which speaks from within that within we are told already has essentially three aspects the inner mental the inner vital and the inner physical when these have prepared themselves then the future can take proper shape our inner mind dwells in a larger light a mighty life self which is inner powers supports our activities and then of course our body's subtle self is thrown within it is the subtle self of the body which governs our physical aspects is viewless palace of vertical dreams that are bright shadows of the thoughts of god well this inner being inner mental inner vital in a subtle physical are but the shadows of the ideas the thoughts of god they have to become realities that is what the light coming from above will do now it is in this context we see the appearance of man on the biological scene biological scene as well as in the evolutionary process on the evolutionary scene biological is 
just one aspect of the more comprehensive evolutionary scene it is this inner physical which will govern the biological if it wants certain kind of a form certain type of a body it is that which will prepare the body the inner physical it is that which will prepare the body for future use so it is something of that type in the cosmic working which formed the body of man body of man is not an extension a prolongation of the biological evolution of species the quick biology tells us that man is a descendant from monkey from ape the biological features are such that as if it is the ape which has become man but the greater truth the real truth is that it is the inner physical which has shaped the body of man and it has used the biological tools biological instruments biological processes to give rise to what we call man it is a different kind of a compulsion and not the biological push which has produced man now this is something which is very important and it is very explicitly brought out in this description by the occult yogi by shrevendu who sees the inner workings of things of the individual and of the cosmos science is one linear chain of movement but there are behind it reasons of a different type compulsions of a different type pushes and forces of a different type which produce the necessary desired results it prepares the body for its use what it has conceived to be necessary it is that for that that the instrument the biological instrument is prepared therefore we have a very very significant phrase here in the prone obscure beginnings of the race prone obscure beginnings of the race the human grew in the bout ape like man human grew in the ape like man it is not that ape has become human but it is human who grew in that man who looked like an ape he is not ape he looked like an ape now this is something absolutely remarkable from the point of view of well occult knowledge of course but for understanding the evolutionary biology scientific methods may not accept it they have no clue about these things there is perhaps no reason also for them to accept these things but the real answer will come if we understand this particular aspect and then perhaps true knowledge of science also will tell us that yes it is something like that it is not from ape 
but from an ape like creature that man has a reason because the inner being is there and it is he who is shaping all the instrumental aspects including the biological that is the important point here you see <clears throat> well we have in contrast to the understanding of science about the significance of the earth in the occult sense the occult importance of the earth we say quickly that the earth is the center of the universe immediately the astronomer will dismiss it he says it's nonsense earth is a small minuscule negligible unobservable speck in the vastness of space billions and billions of galaxies stars and one small little sun in the corner of a milky way and of that sun one small little planet the blue planet the earth how can that be the center of the universe great battles were fought about the heliocentricity and geocentricity about 400 years ago people were burnt alive for holding the view of geocentricity sorry heliocentricity <clears throat> but we have missed the real meaning of the phrase earth is the center of the universe earth is the center center in what sense a physical center a material center an astronomical center no it is not the center of the universe we have not understood the meaning of the word center earth is the center shevendo in fact describes in a small little book the mother that earth is a significant center of the universe significant center of the universe not the physical material center a significant center now what is the significant center here for what is the meaning the connotation or the word significance well the mother has spoken about it in great detail and of course shevendu also but mother has told these things in a conversational language she says that earth was formed for a specific purpose where the entire effort of concentration could be felt it is formed to concentrate the evolutionary effort evolutionary effort in the growth of consciousness from the physical to the vital to the mental to the higher possibilities that kind of a growth of consciousness is possible in the evolutionary process but in order that that growth takes place there has to be a place for work and it is the earth which has been formed specifically for that purpose a place for work now how this evolutionary process can go on 
it cannot go on in a mechanical manner it cannot go on by the process of nature alone it cannot go on even with the help of gods even with the help of the highest gods even with the help of the transcendental gods it cannot go on by itself unless there is present on earth the divine element the psychic element the divine spark it is the presence of the psychic being on earth which makes it a significant center it is because of the psychic being that there is a good possibility of the evolutionary process marching ahead so when shevendu says that the earth is a significant center it is significant from the point of view of evolutionary manifestation that is the crucial thing evolutionary manifestation now <coughs> this particular aspect will of course not be recognized by science it is not concerned with the psychic being it has no way of knowing it studying it analyzing it putting it on the table of the laboratory and viewing it under the microscope that is not possible for science to do at all therefore it is futile for science to even dismiss it to contradict it of course it cannot the only possibility is to recognize that such a thing can be in the scheme of things if science can understand that such a thing can be in the scheme of things then it would have broadened its outlook its methodology its viewpoint and try to see things from a different angle also without this kind of a materialistic insistence that earth is a speck in the cosmos in the universe which materially of course is true but even the gods are envious of this earth even the highest gods are envious of this earth the mother has narrated her meeting with durga and durga was amazed how mother could do small small little little things there and the mother told that it is because of the psychic being which you don't have you will not understand if you want to understand that if you want to really get the experience of that you have to come down here with the psychic being are you ready durga said sorry i will wait for some more time <laughs> not now so that is the significant center why earth is a significant center in other words the entire evolutionary process is unique to earth because of the presence of the psychic being and it is in that uniqueness that we have to also see the biological aspect of evolution after all the biological evolution is a small element in the large golden chain of things that had taken place that are being taking place that will take place it is bound to happen that way <coughs> the human grew in the bowed ape like man see how careful how scientific how precise at the same time how definite the yogi poet is he is a ape like man 
नो बड़े हैज इवन कंसीव दैट सच ए पॉसिबिलिटी इज देयर दैट नो नो ही मे लुक लाइक एन एप ही इज नॉट एप दैट डिस्टिंगशन को नो नो बडी कुड सी इट दैट इज ए मास्टर फ्रेज एप लाइक मैन इफ वी अंडरस्टैंड द नेचर ऑफ दिस देन ऑल अवर प्रॉब्लम्स of evolutionary biology and what is called creationism get automatically resolved they will automatically vanish there is a great debate going on in the world even today about creationism and evolutionary biology creational biology and evolutionary biology there is a very strong lobby even in a country like america usa which insists that evolutionary biology is absurd has no meaning should not be accepted what is required is to understand the nature of creationism now it is not only a dispute in the world of thought it is also a dispute in the actual working of things there have been laws passed in some states of the US which have banned evolutionary biology to be taught in schools it should not be taught to the children at all the evolutionary biology what should be taught is only creationism God said let there be light there was light let there be creation and there was creation that is what we had in theology and when did it happen according to theology according to the discussions in those circles of creationism they say that man came on the scene maybe some 10000 years ago 10000 years ago they totally dismiss the paleontological discoveries which have been made which trace the human origin to several millions ago back they dismiss it totally they call it that it is not science at all the scientific discovery of man rather scientific statement of man emerging out of ape the darwinian evolution is itself challenged by the traditions of science a famous critic of science popper he says that it is not a scientific theory at all darwin's theory is not a scientific theory at all what is the criterion of a scientific theory that a scientific theory should be falsifiable it should be able to tell you certain things we should be done and experimented and checked in the laboratory if you cannot do that then it is not a scientific theory possible falsifiability lies carry out the experiment and say yes or no 
that it is so in the laboratory or it is not at all so that is demanded by a scientific theory the darwinian theory cannot lend itself to such a proposition therefore one need not even attach much significance to the idea of science telling us that man is a descendant of an ape on what basis it may be a good fancy maybe a good quick way of getting a kind of popularity also perhaps but that does not become a scientific fact that is the whole crux of the matter actually in order to become a scientific fact you should be able to conduct experiment struggle for existence yes there is some element in it but that does not still come under the category of scientific experimentation that is the crucial thing see so therefore our poet is very careful when he says that in the prone obscure beginnings obscure beginning we had no knowledge at all of how things happened how things began we had no knowledge obscure beginnings of the race the mental being how the mental being has arrived we had no, no knowledge of that the human grew in the bout ape like man prone obscure beginnings there are no records what can you talk of there was no man at that time to take down notes record the entire sequence of developments to tell us yes this happened this happened this happened this happened and therefore out of this biological creature this biological creature arrived there is no way of telling us at all because there was nobody there at the time to record those things although paleontology might give certain clues but then there are always clues and there are perhaps too many gaps in between you make to fill up those gaps leaps of imagination and say yes this happened this happened this happened this happened quite often there are leaps of imagination which are no scientific basis to uphold them you see so prone obscure beginnings there was none to record in fact at one point the mother says that had that been recorded in the history of evolution her future task would have become simpler from man to the next step she would have got some clues yes this what happened from animal to man from man to the higher race there is possibly a clue then available but there was nobody to record and tell us this is how the animal has become man there was nobody to record at that time you see she in a certain sense therefore regrets which is perfectly understandable because there was nobody to record the human faculty of cognition of seeing knowledge through a certain perspective was not available at all it was basically all along the life force which was driving the events now a like man that is the crucial thing <clears throat> how that happens perhaps we might stretch our imagination and say that the description of the monkey army in the ramayana is providing you a certain kind of a hint it is from vanara that man has arrived 
it is here manra who is helping man in the actions of life a certain life force has produced an animal being which is now at the service of the mental being and that is a great transition the life force pushing the mental being forward in conquering the life forces that is what the avatar hood rama means of rama means basically so we cannot say that ramayana and the vanaras and all the other similar creatures in the ramayana are mythical foolish imaginations of an ignorant poet they are not there is an awful depth behind all those things and it is very likely that in one of the previous cycles of creation in one of the earlier manvantaras the animal being had advanced to the stage of vanara who is now ready to become who is now ready to transit from animal to the mental and his body by the occult forces is now prepared in such a way that a transition can take place here is the ape here is the man the occult the inner working is such that the body of man can get formed maybe to begin with it is ape like it is about but then the real essence is that it is already in a very elemental stage the mental being he is already a mental being different than the vital being in one of the records shivendu speaks of vanara belonging to a different cycle of evolution and he also mentions that the entire process of evolution was in one of the earlier cycles tried on mars on the planet mars so it is very likely that this mental being sorry this animal being this vanara belonged to that manvantara elsewhere but it is that psychic memory which is retained in the scheme of evolution and when things could not progress further that whole creation was dissolved there was pralaya there were six pralayas so far in the present cycle it is that memory that occult knowledge that occult force that occult substance which is gathered up and the evolution is taking place in a different manner it is here in this human tribe early tribe that savitri has arrived and it is savitri who is going to remove all the obstacles standing on the path of evolution that is her task she has come for that the mental being is there she has to lead him from this stage to the next stage the intermediate race the gnostic race in the sequence of development that is what has to happen here in the aitariya <clears throat> upanishad there is a very small beautiful parable again in the context of this process the gods wanted 
beings here for their habitation gods were eager to come down and be here on earth but they could not find proper forms proper beings into which into whom they could enter therefore the spirit showed them to begin with here is the cow go and occupy this cow it told the gods go and occupy the cow the gods said sorry she won't do for us she is not enough for us to do any work all right the spirit presented to them the horse the life force the life dynamism and told them told the gods go and occupy this creature this animal horse and again the gods were not happy no it cannot contain our powers and possibilities what the kind of work which we would like to do we cannot do in this creature the spirit went back and then presented to the gods here is man the mental being go and occupy this is the place for your habitation go and live in him and the gods were immensely pleased yes he is the fit instrument for us a proper house for our habitation we can go and live in him in other words from the occult spiritual sense whatever the gods and the higher powers of the spirit can do it is there that the importance of man comes not animal not even the most powerful animal like the horse it is man in him the gods can do the work so it is here that we have to begin with this man who has the shape the features but not the psychological essence or contents of an ape it is a thing which is totally different in the inner makeup in the inner mental inner physical in the inner vital than what is there in the animals because behind this inner is present the psychic and it is the psychic which prepares these inner faculties mental vital physical and when they become proper when they open themselves out for a proper working then the power of the spirit can enter into them and do their things it is then that the gods can step in man and do the work the work of evolution now that is what man is a like to start with but with a full glory of becoming a gnostic being when he opens more and more to the incoming powers of the spirit when the greater and greater gods come and start living in him then he opens himself 
to the possibilities of the Gnostic being. At that point can begin the new race, the Gnostic race. In between there could be a transition from the mental race, between mental race and the Gnostic race, the intermediate race, a transition between the two, a necessary link between the two extremes, the transcendental and the cosmic. It is there that the intermediate race can function in a very definite manner. That is the work which was initiated in 1950. I might say the beginning of it was made at 1.25 a.m. on 5 December 1950, the beginning of the new race from that point onward. It became a concrete thing on 29th February 1956. The mother with a triumph was trying to carry this thing forward to the extent possible with the present humanity, exercising all the while the will of the Supreme in the entire process, the will of man, of humanity, of the growing creature getting more and more identified with the will of the Supreme, it is that process she was busy with. It is that process she is busy with. It is that process which will produce the triumphant result. In the prone, obscure beginnings of the race, the human grew in the bowed ape-like man. These are the two lines we were seeing last time. We have the entire past, the cosmic past, the present is now described and what is going to follow will be the future. The cosmic past through the stages of evolution of consciousness has brought out the mental being, Manovaya Purusha. It is the inner mental, the inner vital, the inner physical that has molded the biological material to give a form to this being, to man. He is an independent creature, not one who has grown from ape into man but from a condition very similar to an ape in the very early stages, the obscure beginnings, what has happened, how it happened, of that there is no record, of that there is no knowledge. That is the secret of the occult nature. She has managed to produce this particular form and now it is here who is taking the leadership of the present evolution. So we have got the cosmic past, the present is described as a mental being, the cosmic future is what is going to be described in the subsequent few passages. Now all this is seen by Savitri as a cosmic dream, the entire evolutionary course past, present, future. And what does she see as far as the future is concerned? That is what we can now look into. 
this human he stood erect a god like form and force now this is something very unique to the mental being man the mental being is a bridge between the beast and god he is not a product of the beast he is not one who has descended from god he is an independent evolutionary bridge in the course of biological development in fact based more on the evolution of consciousness he stood erect a god like form and force that is what the aitareya upanishad also says yes man is well made that the gods can enter into him for habitation that they can now do their work in him he should erect a god like form and force and a source of thoughts looked out from earth born eyes that is the possibility only available for man the animal creature doesn't have that faculty at all so thoughts looked out from earth born eyes man stood erect he wore the thinker's brow manishi that is what he has become he looked at heaven and saw his comrade stars a vision came of beauty and greater birth that is the future vision of greater beauty man is not really that beautiful but there are possibilities present in him and he sees them vision came of beauty and greater birth slowly emerging from the harsh shackle of light from the corridors of light from the chapel of light he sees a greater light dawning on him and moved in a white lucent air of dreams now it is that dream of the future which has to become a reality but the important point is man can dream all those possibilities it is only the mental being who has evolved to that extent he can dream of the future prospects lucent air of dream that is what he can breathe and he can see he saw his beings unrealized vastnesses he knows already that there is something in him far beyond the post human destinies it is not only the rational mind growing more and more rational but that is something radically different post human destinies belong to the spiritual domains of the higher mind illumined mind spiritual mind over mind even beyond that these are the post human destinies lying in front of him and he is dreaming of them he is seeing them he is visioning them also slowly emerging from the harsh shackle of light and moved in a white lucent air of dreams he saw his beings unrealized vastnesses and aspired and housed the nascent demigod it is in him that god can take birth can be born in him can live in him demigod demigod mythologically demigod is half mortal half immortal and it is that possibility of man which is now being shown in the word demigod he is already mortal but if the gods enter him he can become a demigod there are number of examples of the demigods in greek mythology even in indian traditions also Hercules is supposed to be a demigod in a sense the Pandavas 
are demigods they are the seeds of gods sown in the mortal womb kunti was holding their seeds they are the demigods pandavas already in their sense see one can also become a demigod by one tapasya by growing into spiritual status one can become a demigod one could say that narad himself is a demigod human who has grown into the status of godhood hanuman is of course a demigod in that sense there are demigods and man can become demigod but this demigodhood of man is not going to be something like a frozen state of consciousness or of growth it is that which will open more and more to godhood the mortal receiving god in him and growing in that godhood this is what is implied in the process of evolution so this demigod in that sense man becoming a demigod means the prospects of of his growing into the full nature of god in the earthly creation in the earthly progress is what is being seen by man in his cosmic vision he saw his beings unrealized vastnesses he aspired and how the nascent demic god out of the dim recesses of the cell the occult seeker into the open came he is hiding inside us he has been working from behind pushing things forward but now with the appearance of man and he is seeing the prospects of the future he is aspiring for the vision future he is seeing the vision the new dreams becoming demigod then he can become overt he can come out and do the work directly the occult seeker into the open came he heard far and touched the intangible this demigod like man now he is hearing the far voices coming from distance vast messages he is seeing them he heard the far and touched the intangible he gazed into the future and the unseen he used the powers of earth instruments cannot use man has acquired powers which earth instruments are incapable of using them basically he is a product of earth but now he has a mastery over earth he can fly into space he can dive deep into the pacific he has got every scope now of growing in every dimension and therefore he sees the unseen future he heard the far and touched the intangible he gazed into the future and the unseen he used the powers earth instruments cannot use a past time made or impossible what until now appeared to him impossible that has now became a game for him a play for him 50 years ago suddenly 60 years ago it had been impossible for man to think of going to the moon and walking on it but now it has become a reality now there is a curiosity rover landed on mars bring out tons of data did life exist on mars in some earlier formation that is a crucial question which perhaps this rover will go around and pick up and send the details to us it is very likely that some kind of traces of life which existed in the far cycles of time are present on mars 
and they could be discerned here. The earlier cycles, mass was the center for the concentration of the evolutionary effort. Now Earth has become the center, the significant center. He used the powers, Earth instruments cannot see you. A pastime made of the impossible, he caught a fragment of the omniscient thought. Small little bits at least, he is now able to get omniscient, who sees everything, a bit of it he is able to get now. He has developed his faculties of sadhyana to receive something from the omniscient himself directly, which was impossible in the earlier stages of evolution. Even today, no animal has that faculty. It has its own vital intuition, its own way of forcing a few things, but not too far behind. But man can now see the possibilities of the thoughts of the omniscience entering into him. He scattered formulas of omnipotence. He has acquired mastery over the forces of nature. He is flying in the air. He is traveling into space. He is diving deep into the ocean. He has produced enormous powerhouses out of a tiny atom. Now these are the things which have come out because man has made not only the material progress but also the spiritual progress. The advance has definitely taken place. He scattered formulas of omnipotence. Thus man in his little house made of earth's dust, grew towards the unseen heaven of thought and dream, looking into the vast vistas of his mind on a small globe dotting infinity. <laughs> After all, what is a, a speck of dust in the vast necessary universe? Even astronomically, earth is nothing. It is nowhere in the billions and billions of stars which are present in the sky. Even our own sun is a small little star, a young star in the galaxy. So that way, on a small globe dotting infinity, man is now in a position to see the future prospects of growing into a demigod. His vision he is able to cast a bit of omniscience a bit of omnipotent forces he can possess in his arms. That is the gain which is acquired by him in the long course of evolution. At last, after this advance, after this progress, at last, climbing a long and narrow stair, he stood alone on a high roof of things. He is standing at the top of the roof, very high, on a mental level. He can reach over mind planes. From where you can look into the transcendent. There are now possibilities of man climbing to the over mind plane and looking into the supramental. He stood alone on a roof of things and saw the light of a spiritual sun. Aspiring, he transcends his earthly self, whatever earth has given. Yes, that is the base, that is the foundation, that is the support, but his aspiration now leads him to higher things. Transcending, aspiring, he transcends his earthly self. He stands in the largeness of his soul, newborn, redeemed from the encirclement of mortal things. Well, he is immortal, but he is surrounded by the mortal things, but there is a possibility of breaking the chain of mortality and moves in a pure, free, spiritual realm. He can become mukta. He can get freedom from the earthly bondages and moves in a pure, 
free spiritual realm as in the rare breath of a stratosphere you can go to the highest degree available on the scale stratosphere is not a very high plane in terms of the geography of the earth but stratosphere metaphorically stands for the highest degree to which one can climb in terms of physics you have got troposphere then stratosphere then mesosphere ionosphere and beyond that the vastness of space so man is in a position now to look get into the stratosphere the stratosphere which lies between troposphere and mesosphere between roughly 10 kilometers above the earth to 50 kilometers above the earth he can stand there he can look into that thing where the temperature variation does not take place in the stratosphere in the meso in the lower parts there is a variation of temperature as you climb up and up so from about 10 km height to 50 km height he can stand and look at the sun and moves in a pure free spiritual realm as in the rare breath of a stratosphere stratosphere here of course metaphorically means at the highest point of climbing about the earth he can go about the earth and then what happens a lost end of far lines of divinity he is after all what a lost end of far lines of divinity lost who has no direct connection with the divinity the divinity has kind of thrown a line and down 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 below it has lost the end it doesn't know where it has gone basically what it means is that from the world of knowledge the sequence of coming down is ending into ignorance from the world of superconscious coming down through various grades the line is descending down into the inconscious and the end is lost there one doesn't know how to pick up that end and climb back a lost end of far lines of divinity he mounts by a frail thread to his high souls so as if there is a kind of a rope hanging from above the end of the rope is not seen but somehow he has caught hold of him and he is climbing on that rope upward he mounts by a frail thread to his high souls high souls the subconscious souls where from he has come he reaches his found of immortality that is what he will get amrutatva he will become amrutamaya that is what is going to happen for man by catching this thread of consciousness and going up he will reach that height he reaches the found of immortality which is there in the transcendent and that possibility is now open for man he called the godhead into his mortal life now it is not only that from the lost end he is climbing up to his source and reaching the realm of immortality amruta jagat it is not that he is also invoking that immortality to come down and live in him it is that immortality which must house in mortal man he is not going to be immortal he is going to be deathless on earth that is the possibility mrityahina rahit that is what he will be here without in other words it is a greater state 
to be on earth the state of deathlessness than of immortality if he becomes deathless upon earth then if he wants to die so to say he can die immortality that prospect is not there you can't die because suppose for some reason for some purpose for some function you want to remove this form and take another form that is possible for a deathless being and it is that which is now invoking a last end of far lines of divinity he mounts by a frail thread to his high source he reaches a spound of immortality yes we will go in that world of immortality mrityor ma amrutam gamaya that boon is granted to him it is sanctioned to him amruta gamaya he reaches the fount of immortality he cast the godhead into his mortal life that is the greatness of man the aspiring soul the psychic being which is there in man it is that which is inviting god come down and live in me here upon earth yes it is all right i can always go and be with you up there but my work my prospects my future is here upon the earth and those prospects that future can be fulfilled when you come down and live here in me a last end of our lines of divinity he mounts by a frail thread to his high source he reaches the fount of immortality he called the godhead into his mortal life so that is the prospect of the future the cosmic future savitri has seen the cosmic past savitri knows the present savitri now sees in the dream consciousness the cosmic future of godhead entering into man and doing his work in man man has opened out himself to that and the god it can enter into him now and do that work